You're listening to Your Two Cents, the podcast, made possible by Credit Unions of Atlantic Canada. Spencer Barbosa knew she wanted to be independent by the time she turned 18, but knowing her lofty goals came with a hefty price tag, Spencer had to set out to make her dream a reality. Her obsession with making financial literacy cool really resonated with her followers on TikTok. So how did she do it? And what has she learned on the way? Sylvia, sit down with Spencer on this episode of Your Two Cents, the podcast. Brought to you by Credit Unions of Atlantic Canada. Spencer, I am so excited to talk to you today. Thank you for being here. I'm excited to talk to you. (laughs) I'm really super impressed by you. You're 18. You're financially independent. You're living on your own for the first time. I can tell you when I was 18, I was doing none of those things. (laughs) So how'd you do it? Honestly, okay, this is going to sound super just horny and cheesy, but... When I was in high school, the whole time that I was in there, I was like, I need to move out at 18. This is like such a goal that I had in my head. And I'm the kind of person that when I have the goal, there's nothing getting in my way. So I worked three jobs for most of high school. And I feel like because I had that end all goal, I was like, you know what? It's fine. I'm like sacrificing a social life. I worked um, three jobs all of high school with this being the end goal. And then also I'm like really into manifesting. So I had this like written on my wall and I could see it every day. And I was like, when I'm 18, I'm moving out. I'm going to have my own place. So honestly, just hard work. Actually knowing that this is something that I wanted to do and I needed to do, I made it a need instead of just a want. I was ready to have some like more freedom and move out, you know? (laughs) I'm so impressed by that. I think both of those things are so true. My mom always says, the harder you work, the luckier you get, which I always think is so true. Like it's not- Because it's mostly hard work. It's not actually luck, but we always say like, we're so lucky, we're so lucky. But manifesting is a huge part of it, I think. I think if you don't like look towards something, how do you ever get there? But to have the hustle at that age to work three jobs, especially in high school, there's so much temptation of social events and things you want to be doing and being in the mix. Where did you work? If you don't mind me asking, do you have any fun like first job stories? I actually had really fun jobs, not gonna lie. So I had like multiple jobs, but my main jobs were I worked at Dairy Queen. I can't complain about working at Dairy Queen. Literally, the best. (laughs) I'm like, I eat so much ice cream. I'm lactose intolerant, but I did work at Dairy Queen. I love that. I worked there for a solid, I think a little bit over two years. And then I also worked at a place called the Land of the Glass Slipper. And I was a Disney princess at little kid birthday parties. Oh, (laughs) I'm sorry. I was literally living the dream. And then I also, I've done acting since I was like 10. So people will say that's not a job, but it was a source of income. It was a job for me. (laughs) Totally a job. Okay. I'm sorry. Now I'm jealous of you. I was just (laughs) inspired before, but I'm talking to a real life Disney princess who also worked at Dairy Queen. You were literally on all hierarchies of royalty, queens, princesses. You're doing it all. Acting is a hundred percent a job. No matter what anybody says, being on camera is very hard work. It's also a super tough industry to get into and make a living at. So you had to develop so many skills to be able to do that. So I absolutely think it's a job love that you're lactose intolerant working at dairy queen (laughs) i worked at the movie theater when i was that was my first job it was so cute i loved it i got free movies so my friends were obsessed we would go to see everything but the outfit sucked so i hated that part it was the only movie theater in my town it's like all the cute boys from my high school would go there and I was in this like dumpy thing. I would be working in the drive-thru and these cars full of boys would come through and I'm like, oh, uh. <laughs> I have like the little like microphone thing on. I was like, hi, welcome to Dairy Queen. How can I help you? But it was like a way to talk to them, I guess. Well, totally. They knew me from Dairy Queen. <laughs> Absolutely. And like you have the most lovely voice. So I feel like you would already just like home run through the speakers and it's all, hey, it's part of your journey. And I do think that all of those little jobs along the way build so much character. And at the end of the day, getting a paycheck is such a big deal when you're young. I actually ended up working for the company, the same movie theater company later in my life in marketing and my old pay stubs were still there. So I actually looked at my first paycheck when I was in my 20s again, like my later 20s. And to see that I made, I think like $30 was my first paycheck at the movie theater. And then being there as an employee in their corporate office, working in a marketing role. Again, I wanted to be there so badly. It was my first job. It was a job that helped change my career later on, but it was so cool to like, look back and go like, okay, now I'm not in the scoop of popcorn in my outfit, but I loved that job. 
you see how much you've grown. I think because I've had like other jobs too where I've worked at like bakeries and stuff like that. And every job you work, you learn so much. And I think it is so important. And some of my friends who like have never like worked or like haven't had a job throughout high school. I think I've learned more from working at different places than I have from anything else. Because you learn about the people around you. Like you said, getting your first paycheck is insane. And then you're like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited to get paid. I'm so excited to get paid. I'll be 15 in high school budgeting how I was going to spend my paycheck or how much money was going in my savings. And growing up, my parents never paid for like my phone bill. They never paid for anything. So I like had to have a job and it was so much fun. I felt like a mini adult. You were mini adult. (laughs) I love it. It's so important because you are learning to budget. There's all these things. As I was watching your content, all the stuff you're making, I was given hope because I feel like in an age where people are like tapping and swiping and Uber Eatsing, I never had any of that growing up. So I had to physically give money over, like even having a debit card was not a thing when I first started working. Like I had a physical paycheck that I had to take to the bank and then I had to take out actual money and then give it to someone. So because it was so physical, you had, you thought about every dollar that you spent. And so the fact that you're of a generation who has been able to like tap and do everything online, you're giving me hope that like money is still a thing that you can care about at that age, which I think is really, really important. I never thought of it like the way that you just said that. Cause it is so tempting. Like even on your phone, how you can pay from your phone. I always say to my mom, let me put your card on, on your phone. Like it's so much easier. And she's like, Spencer, that is so tempting. <laughs> she's like, I'll buy so much more. And it's true. And I never thought of it like that because even now, like I don't have cash with me ever. Like what is cash now? I'm like, I don't ever have it. Totally. It's so strange. And I find myself keeping a 20 bucks on me all the time. And it's always there. What am I using it for? Absolutely nothing. Like I've, it's just been there forever. I have no, I have no purpose with the $20 bill in my wallet. It's just there going back a sec to the job that you have now, Mm -hmm. you have built this amazing online platform through self-love comedy, financial freedom. When did you figure out that having a strong online platform could also be a job? I was literally just doing this for fun. And I would be like, oh my gosh, mom, like I got 10,000 views on a video. And I would tell my mom every single thing. My mom's super supportive. So every single thing I would like tell her. And then randomly one day I got this message like on Instagram from a manager in LA. And they were like, I love your content. We need to have a meeting. Like we need to sign you. You are going to be something big. And I was like, I have like less than a hundred thousand followers. Like what, like what do you mean? I'm like, I can make money from this because I'm just doing this for fun. I'm like, I can make money from this. And then I had a couple meetings with different managers and I ended up signing with one in LA and I was like, Oh, so this is something I'm actually doing now. I was like, this is going to be money now. Like what? And then even the way that you're saying, like looking back on your first paycheck from the movie theater, I can see my first paycheck from doing social media and I can compare it to now. And it literally blows my mind. And I'm like, I don't know how growing this fast happened, but I'm like, it feels like it happened overnight. And now it's my income. And I'm like sitting in my apartment and I'm like, wait, so I literally just like get to make videos and have fun and like, do this. So I think it was as soon as I got a message from my manager, I was like, that's crazy because I wasn't expecting this. And I hadn't known anyone who like did TikTok full time and TikTok wasn't a big thing really. It like came out of nowhere. It totally did. And I feel people who are kind of on the ground level of that and were making things authentically. And I think that's why you're so relatable. And there's a couple of people um, who are going to be on this podcast as well too. Like Alicia McCarvall had the same thing, put up a video. It was super organic and just from her heart and people fell in love with her because of the story she was telling too. And so I think if you were sort of in that early adopter group of people finding you and you were just being who you are, we're hungry for realness and just people being themselves. We can figure out the things that the Kardashians and all the people who have got the giant teams of people and the hair squads and whatever, most of us are just normal human beings. Yeah. We got on this podcast. I was like, hi, I've been rained on 17 times today. Normally I'd be a much more polished version of myself, but that's just what's happened to my life today. It's who you are. And so I think we need to embrace that. And I think you have, which is translated to this amazing journey that you're on. Yeah. Cause I was even making a Instagram story a couple of days ago and someone had asked me if as like an influencer, if I felt pressure to be pretty all the time. And I was like, honestly, it's not even the pressure of looking good. It's the pressure of, I feel like I need to be cool all the time. But I was like, I'm going to be so honest with you guys. Like I don't even have a car. Like I'm not like some, I'm not walking around with a designer bag. I was like, I don't have those kind of things. Like at the end of the day, I'm literally just an 18 year old. And I was like, it's so cool that 
this is what my job is and that I'm able to make like a good income off of this. But also I'm literally just an 18 year old. (laughs) I'm I'm not that cool. I'm like, I do fun things and I love my job, but I'm not, I'm not like crazy cool. Like the way that I feel like other influencers have to look all the time. Well, I think you're very cool personally, but I hear what you're saying. It's like, you're just living your life and you're bringing people along for the ride. And if they're down and they are inspired by what you're doing, then that is to me being cool. And I think that there's such a point of view that like being cool means designer handbags and driving around in your car and having flashy things. When I was watching your content, I feel like I was looking at an 18 year old version of myself, Aww. which is fun because I think at that age in my life, I was, you're trying to fit in, you're going to school for the first time. You're maybe living away from home for the first time, whatever phase of your journey you're in, you're doing that. And it's such a complicated time. You're figuring out so much. And I wish I didn't feel like I needed to be cool. And I think part of that was connected to spending money you didn't have. So in university, I would work in the summer, but I didn't normally have a job during the school year because I went to a university in a tiny little town. Mm -hmm. It was when Lululemon came out and everyone was like, I must wear Lululemon. I'm making zero money and I'm spending a hundred dollars on sweatpants. That is not a smart financial decision to be making, but you feel like you had to keep up with people. And I feel like if I had my knowledge now, I would have been so much scrappier with my money. Mm. The money I was working for my jobs in the summer would have stretched so much further in my school year because I wasn't spending it on dumb things to fit in. Yeah. So I think the fact that you're like, I don't have a car, I'm doing the thing, but I'm doing it my way and I'm being smart about it financially, I think is really, really cool, regardless of whether or not you feel cool. Thank you. Cause I'm like, I just want to make videos and people feel like like I'm talking to them. You know what I mean? Cause there's so many videos that I see on TikTok where it's like, I love the videos and I love to watch them, but I can't necessarily relate with them. But I want someone to watch my video and be like, thank you. Someone else understands. You know what I mean? That's my whole goal. I'm happy I'm getting that across. (laughs) You 100% are. So you love educating people on being financially responsible. What is one tip you'd give to someone regardless of their age to try and take control of their money? Mm, Okay. I, this is one that I literally preach this to every single person I meet and my friends think that I'm crazy, but I think regardless of how old you are, regardless of how much money you're making, you need to have a budget book. And if you don't have a budget book, you're doing something wrong and you're confusing yourself. I have literally a notepad from the dollar store and one side is how much money I made that month, whether it's from multiple sources of income or just what I got paid from doing social media. And the other side is what I spent that month. And then there's like a little part of bills that I'm going to have. So like my rent every month, my phone bill every month, like those are expenses that I can't control that I'm going to have to pay. And then at the end of the month, I like to actually add up how much money I spent as like going out for dinner with my friends, buying new clothes. And then I also add up how much money I made. And then that way I can see like, oh, why did I spend an extra $300 this month? Did I need that? Like, what was the point of that? And I can actually reflect on that. And it's also fun to see like, oh, am I making more money this month? Am I making less money this month? What could I change? And I never did this before when I was in high school. And like, I didn't think to. It feels like a waste of your time at the beginning until you actually start to learn things from it. But my mom literally looked at me and she's like, girl, you're grown now. You're making money. You're spending money. She's like, you got to know what your budget is and you have to actually budget because now I'm buying groceries. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like I'm a woman. (laughs) You got bills to pay all of a sudden. You got food to put in your mouth. Yeah. So I think a budget book 100%. And I say this to everyone always because I learned so much about my financial situation just from a budget book. And it's beautiful. It's so smart. I was hoping you were going to say that because I've watched your video about your budget book and I was obsessed. I didn't find that I was tracking my spending as much as I did until I got married. And then because I had this extra layer of money happening in our life and I was really, really hell bent on not going into debt when we got married, I started putting everything in a tracker and people thought I was nuts too. And I was like, no, I want to know what my budget is. Am I over under on every single thing? I'm not going to go into debt for this wedding. And so I started doing it there. And then I got addicted to the information (laughs) I was learning from it. So to this day, I've been married for almost 10 years. I still use my tracker. Hmm. I work for myself too. So I need to know where my money's coming from. I also have multiple revenue streams. So I need to understand that. I think even if you're working at a job where you're getting paid every two weeks, the same amount of money every two weeks, all year round. It's so important to understand where your money's going because things like eating out can add up things like shopping, even though I'm a bargain hunter, you're still spending money on stuff. And so it is such a fun exercise to see your 
income grow Mm -hmm. and be responsible with your money. And I think if people treated it more like a fun activity than a chore, more people will be doing it. But I know there's like apps and stuff you can use. And I think there's something about writing something down that makes you stop for a second because you do everything on your phone. So writing down money related things is like, you're taking a second to like be a bit present and make a note of it. I think you're old fashioned, but I think it's new fashioned and at the same time. I've even noticed that if I'm like at home and I'm like, Hmm, do I want to go and get a coffee? Sometimes I'll be like, okay, I don't need one because then I have to write it down. I'm like, <laughs> if I buy it, I have to write it down. So it's like, so it's like sh- save money. It's good. And I think, it's like, like you said, it's like a game, like pretend it's like a coloring book. Like it's something like fun and cute that you have to do. And you can use like different colored pens and stuff. So make it fun and aesthetic. I do. Write your pens expenditure down in your budget book, but also get the cute pen for your budget book. It's really smart. I think there's something to be said for like pen and paper. Mm-hmm. There's a time and place for everything, which I really love. Don't get me wrong. If you're someone who's like, I'm never writing it down, but you go to an app or you are just tracking things in the notes on your phone. I think mm-hmm. just doing it is so, so, so helpful so that you can actually see where your money is going at the end of the month. Don't just pay off a credit card bill or don't just tap your card and then act like it doesn't exist. It exists and it matters for sure. As long as you're starting and you're just like doing something, then as long as you're doing a little bit, then you're doing something still. That's what I think. Totally. I completely agree. And I think like we've both learned knowledge is power. So once you have a little bit of it, you are addicted to the knowledge. And I think people will learn more and more. So even if it was just like this month, I'm just going to track when I got coffee. Mm -hmm. That's a great starting place because then you see how much coffee costs you every month and it's probably more than you think. <laughs> I'm like, yep. I'm spending a lot of money on coffee. <laughs> you sure are. So just switching to like a coffee maker at home or whatever can be such a big life shift. Mm. Speaking of which, you just moved out. Yes. Moving out is expensive. Yes. So <laughs> how did you furnish your house? I am very much like a bargain hunter like you. And you said you are. Facebook Marketplace, Kijiji the thrift store. Also, I moved out of my childhood bedroom so I could take anything that was there because my parents weren't going to be like, oh, keep it here. So I had like uh, my mirror that I got for my birthday before I took that with me. I had like chairs, took that with me. I would recommend to buy most of your furniture once you've like moved into your apartment Hmm. because I found that before I was moving in, my mom was telling me all these different things that I really badly needed and I really needed to buy. And then once I moved in, I didn't end up buying any of it because I was like, I don't need like six patio chairs for my tiny balcony. Do you know what I mean? hundred percent. Like once you're in that situation, you can slowly furnish your place. You don't need to start by buying every single thing ever. Like I didn't have a, my second mirror forever until I literally found it on the side of the road for free. Wouldn't it be nice if your home was actually your home? From paying off your mortgage faster to planning for the future, credit unions can help you find financial independence. Credit unions also have all the mortgage advice you need and a helpful guide to home buying as your one-stop go-to resource for all things home. Link in today's show notes, where you'll also find five tips to become mortgage-free. I love you. This is amazing. I'm addicted to Facebook Marketplace, mostly because I love just seeing good deals. I don't even buy everything, but I love a good deal so much that I'm like, I just need out there today. I don't even buy them necessarily. One tip that we learned. So we did a segment on your two cents, the digital series called first apartment starter kit. And Michelle Milet from Letterkenny was on and her hack that I was obsessed with was a rug on Facebook marketplace. If you're like, I want a beautiful rug. Rugs are so expensive. So she's like, same thing. Kijiji face marketplace, whatever. She takes them to the car wash, mm-hmm. clips them in the car wash on like the rug mat things, uh-huh. washes them in the car wash and then takes them home rather than paying yes. like hundreds of dollars to get them professionally cleaned. Yeah. Literally spend $6 in toonies and yeah. sprays because the soaps there, the things there Genius. all happens outside. So mm-hmm. smart. And then like, like rug flippers after they hear this, they're going to start flipping. Oh my rugs. God. Okay. That's going to be our new show. Rug <laughs> flippers. You think this gross rugs worth anything? We'll show you. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought that it was such a smart idea because rugs are big, but they can smell and they can be dirty. Yeah. Spend 10 bucks. Wash your rug at the car wash. Genius. Literally genius. Because rugs are so expensive. I was looking at them before and 
insane. Rugs are expensive the way that couches are expensive. I didn't realize furniture even really costed anything the way that it does now. Like when I'm buying things, I was like, oh my gosh. I thought, cause I never had to buy furniture before. When you're like, I don't know, five years old and you get like a new bed, like you don't have to buy it. I didn't know it was expensive until I moved out. And I was like, what in the world? Yeah. Yeah. Beds cost money. It's pretty (laughs) crazy. It's a pretty crazy thing. There are certain things I think you can splurge on and certain things that you can skimp on for sure in your home. Buying something that's older and getting it re-upholstered is such a great hack as well too. But is there anything you splurged on in your apartment? Ooh, well, this is something that I got before I moved out. And this was like something I got for my birthday, which I would, it could, I didn't splurge on it. My parents bought it, but like a big mirror because I am like a mirror person. That would be like something that I was like, I can't cheap out on this. You know what I mean? That's such a smart purchase. And then also a good mattress. You need a good mattress. What kind of mattress do you have? I have an ND mattress. It's for, you do? Yeah. I have yeah. a Casper. Okay. I love it. <laughs> but I've heard ND is also unreal. Yeah, I'm like you need a good mattress because if you cheap out on a mattress, you're going to be reminded of it every single night. Like it's not gonna, like it doesn't get better. You need a good mattress and you need a good pillow to sleep on. That's a good call. A good pillow and a good mattress. I think a mirror too. The other thing about a mirror that I love, it's such a multi-purpose thing. Yes, mm-hmm. mirrors are beautiful to look at yourself and take pictures in and do all those yeah. things, but they can also really open up a space. So if you're living in something smaller, a mirror can totally open up a room yeah. and be a really cool piece of art as well too. So I think splurging on a mirror is amazing. Um, but a mattress I'm with you. I think a good mattress and a good pillow are primo. I have to have a huge mirror cause my apartment obviously is not that big. Like I'm living alone. It doesn't have to be big, but also I was like, if I don't have a good mattress, I can't take like good photos. And it's part of my job. I was like, this is my job. I need to have a good mirror. <laughs> I was like, you I sure do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Amazing. I love it. What is the best deal that you found for your new place? Okay. Couches are so expensive. And I got my couch off of Kijiji for $75. And I was like, this is good. I will never complain ever. It was like these sweetest families. My couch is white. So I got a white couch and my dad was like, why the heck would you get a white couch? He's like, this is a terrible decision. I bought it off of like a family that had just had a new baby. And they're like, we can't have a white couch. Like we have a little kid. I was like, okay, amazing. Perfect. I was like, will you do $75? And they're like, yeah, you know what? Sure. I was like, it's my first apartment. Like shout out to whoever I bought this couch off of $75. (laughs) You cannot get cheaper than that for a couch. And it is beautiful. The most comfortable couch ever. I love it so much. I saw it on Instagram when you posted about it. And I was like, that couch did not come from the internet. Like, I'm sorry, but there's just no way. It's beautiful. I bought it and there was like a couple stains on because I could just like take the cover off, right? Because it's just like a cloth material. I scrubbed it, put it in the wash, hung it to dry and now it literally looks perfect. There's no stains, no anything. It's like 75 bucks. It can't get better than that. Uh, amazing. I learned a couple of stain hacks recently and one of them is that if you spill it, I like to wear normally light colors. Like mm-hmm. I will wear white all the time and I am the messiest eater in the entire world. Yeah. I learned that baby wipes take stains oh, okay. out and I don't have kids. So I would have never thought to do this, yeah. but someone told me this recently, literally dropped a smoothie on my leg the next day, ran and bought baby wipes gone. Boom. Amazing. So get yourself some baby wipes for that couch. I stain everything. So I shouldn't be allowed to wear clothes really is the bottom line, but baby wipes got blueberry out of my white jeans. Amazing. I'm going to switch gears a little bit new home still, but are you into small appliances at all? Coffee maker. I just bought one recently. I was trying to survive without having a coffee maker and I was wasting so much money on buying coffee because I would convince myself I didn't need coffee every day. And then Part of me was like, you know what? I'm like a two second walk from a Tim's, a Starbucks, a grocery store, everything. So then I was buying a lot of coffee and my mom was like, Spencer, I think it's time to buy a coffee maker. I just didn't want to do it because then I feel like I'm a grown up now. Every time I buy a new like small appliance, I'm like, I'm becoming even more of an adult. I got like my toaster oven. I have a soda stream because I'm addicted to carbonated water. Got my coffee maker. I'm just like slowly building up my kitchen, but yeah. You're aging by the words coming out of your mouth yeah. by the second. I love it. Soda stream, I think is such a great money saver because I too love a good sparkling water. Mm-hmm. It's so nice to be able to just like have it on the ready, but it's also such a money saver. Also like less plastic and bottles and cans and all the things. So I love that it's an environmental thing as well too. It makes me so happy. Did you do brew coffee maker or like a single cup deal? 
a single cup, but I have like the, um, you know, like the reusable little cup things that you just like, yeah. Yeah. And I just like have one of those or a couple of them and just keep like cleaning them out and I have coffee. So it's much cheaper than spending like my $5 and 70 cents on a pumpkin spice latte. I'm like, I can survive without the pumpkin. I just need the caffeine. So coffee maker is fair enough that you hit on such a great thing too, though. Those single serve pods can add up also. So the ones you're talking about are the little reusable cups and they're awesome. They come in like a two pack usually. Mm -hmm. Then you can go buy coffee from wherever you want and still have the convenience of a single brew coffee maker without the expense of pods and the mess of pods. Yeah, plus for coffee, like if you go to Winners or wherever, they have like the cute like pumpkin kind coffees and I'm like a really big pumpkin person. So I'm like, okay, now I have pumpkin coffee. And I'm like, I have it for longer than pumpkin season. So... <laughs> You have the best of both worlds going on. I love it. And that's such a great hack. Also, Winners is forgotten about for food sometimes. I have found amazing snacks there. They've got great coffee. Like all that kind of stuff is for a really, really good price as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My whole family is like a Winners and HomeSense family. We love it. I'm like, I'm always there. Catch me there always. <laughs> well, because there's such good deals. I will say if I was going to impart any of my wisdom on you from over the years, mm -hmm. the appliance that I am obsessed with, that if like anyone ever tries to convince you otherwise, please pick up the phone and call me immediately. Mm -hmm. I will fight to the death for this. Okay. Instant pot air fryer. Oh, but like separately or together? Together. I was like separately or together because my sister has an instant pot and my mom has an air fryer, but I didn't know. I could get the best of both worlds. Yeah, you can. And I will say this, it's going to cost you like $250. Okay. You will never need a crock pot. You will never need a separate air fryer. It does everything. So my mom lives alone, has one mm -hmm. great for individual meals. Mm -hmm. We're a house of two people. The best French fries you'll ever make in your life come from this thing. So good chicken wings to I did like breaded mushrooms, just like almond flour mushrooms, drop them in. I made my own beef jerky yesterday because there's a dehydrator in it. Okay, I need to come over for dinner. I'm like, this is sounding good. Yeah, you do. I'm getting hungry. I made beef jerky for $4. I found like a great piece of Crazy. steak on sale and made my own beef jerky yesterday and it was healthier. It does 11 things and all of them are amazing. I haven't like some people like make cheesecake and stuff in them and I... Yeah. I'm not that fancy, but for a day-to-day -day appliance, I make bone broth. It does insane things. Yeah. And for like 250 bucks is an appliance that you'll use for years and years and years. It is my favorite appliance of my life. I didn't even know that they had those together. I was like, am I living under a rock? Because I did not even know this. Um, and my mom always tells me, she's like, you need to get an air fryer Spencer because I'm not a cook. I am not a cook whatsoever. And she's like, an air fryer just makes your life easier. Like it's easier to cook things in that rather than my tiny little oven. I also have like a little tiny oven because my little tiny apartment. So I think I need something different to cook because it's very difficult. It's a total game changer and I'm obsessed with it. The other fun thing that it does is because it has the air fryer in it. Mm -hmm. If you get takeout and your takeout's kind of like, you know how sometimes you get fries and they're just like sad because they've gotten like condensation in the thing. Yeah, yeah. You throw them in for like two minutes and your fries come back to life. You have sold me. You need an affiliate link because I'm about to buy this because of you. <laughs> <laughs> I have sold at least three air fryers on Independent. Uh, I'm kidding. Bring your affiliate link. <laughs> I am the unofficial spokesperson for Instant Pot Air Fryers. They're a little intimidating at first. Okay. Once you get over the intimidation factor, I bought one for both of my parents. I have convinced so many of my friends to get them. They are the sneaky tool that no one knows that they need, and yet everyone needs it. And a toaster oven. I'm obsessed with toaster ovens, but this more than the toaster oven. I will yeah. have to buy this. I'll okay. post it to my budget for next month. <laughs> Please do. And if you need any tips and tricks, I'm here for you always amazing as part of my group that I'm building one by one. <laughs> um, okay. So you love home sense and winners and shopping secondhand. Mm -hmm. What is a home decorating tip you would give someone who's starting out? Ooh, first of all, it doesn't have to be expensive. I thought that when I was buying decorations, it had to be expensive and like expensive is like better quality always, but you can get things like used that are the exact same. Also, the dollar store has things that don't really look like they're from the dollar store. You know what I mean? You know what sure I mean? Sure do. Yeah. You probably don't need as many decorations as you think you do. I'm personally like, I don't have things hung on my wall because I don't like that in my opinion. But if I was someone to do that, then I would have to buy like a lot more things. You probably don't need everything you think you need. Everything else is extra and you don't have to buy it all right away. So I just bought like a little cute table runner for my table in my living room. And then I realized I didn't buy that until like two months after I moved in because 
it was like, I could like splurge later on. You don't need to buy it all at the same time because that feels like super intimidating and super expensive. But if you like gradually buy it and like gradually collect things, then you're solid. Also your decorations from when you're like little in your room, like it's, it's still cute. Like I literally have a little vase and it's like some flowers and this is my decoration now. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't have to be expensive always. It can be cheap. I love the thought of taking something like, I don't know about you, but I had a lot of pink in my room growing up Mm -hmm. by my own choice, but maybe it would be a bit bold or like florally or something for my taste now. Spray paint it. Like spray paint costs next to nothing. And whether it's stuff from your own home or that you find on Marketplace or Kijiji or whatever, Spray paint goes a long way. I spray painted a lot of stuff or just like changed it by painting it. Because it, even if it looks like childish, you can make it not look that childish. Do you know what I mean? Like you just have to totally. Paint and my other thing is I live in like a university town. So when everyone was moving in or moving out, they literally left all of their mirrors, cabinets, dressers, everything just on the side of the road. And it's new to you. You don't need to buy brand new. It can just be new to you. Like my mirror free just clean it up spray paint it free you know what I mean so smart just why wouldn't you take it if it's something that you need and someone's literally giving it away like giving it for free I would rather have it in my home than see it go to the landfill or see it literally just go to garbage it's a perfectly amazing mirror from Ikea why would I want it to go in the garbage I completely agree. And I think we're so trained this going back to our earlier conversation of like new is cool. And you think you need things to be on trend or to feel cool or whatever. I think being financially responsible is cool. I think having really cool stuff with a story is really cool. I love being able, like, I am so guilty of someone complimenting me on something. I'm like, let me tell you about this thing. Cause I think I'd rather have a home filled with things that I love that mean something to me that haven't broken the bank. And I think that's a much more fun story to me than living in all kinds of debt so that I have a cool side table. That doesn't make sense to me. When I was buying everything, obviously I want my apartment to be really like cool and aesthetic and beautiful. But at the same time, when I was buying everything, I was like, I don't need to be cool for anyone else. You know, it's so hard to like have that mindset of like, why am I trying so hard to be cool? Like it's my apartment. It's my home. If I like it, if I feel comfortable, if I feel happy, I am cool. Like, you know what I mean? I don't need to have a perfect like Pinterest looking apartment to be cool. I even was going to do a YouTube video of like an apartment tour because I'm trying to get onto YouTube. And then I was about to film it and I was like, oh, my apartment, like it's not clean enough. Like it's not decorated enough. It's not nice enough. Like people are going to judge me for the way that my apartment looks. And I was like, I would personally rather watch a YouTube video of someone showing off their realistic apartment. Yeah. I have some dishes sitting on my counter. No one has all of their dishes put away all the time. Like I know I don't at least. I'm like, no one's mirror is like crystal clear, perfectly cleaned all the time. Mine has got some dust on it sometimes. I would rather go around at my apartment tour and be like, okay, I got this chair from my dad's office and my old house because he let me have it. Or I found this on the side of the road or I picked this up for 20 bucks off Facebook marketplace. Like that's cool. Like I would rather flex the things that I got on sale like sale is cool or even if it's really old some people think that like old is bad think of it as vintage like oh it's vintage (laughs) that is the spin on it all it's vintage we spent an entire weekend going to antique stores a couple weeks ago and i never in a million years would have thought that we'd be doing that Mm -hmm. we found unreal stuff that it was so beautiful that cost next to nothing Mm -hmm. i also recommend that people if they're looking to shop vintage Going in a bigger city can be kind of tricky because you end up having vintage matched with then being overpriced. But if you kind of go into smaller towns and stuff, you can often find really wicked antiques, even secondhand clothing stores in smaller towns. You'll find amazing things at way less money than maybe in a bigger city. So Mm -hmm. like if you have the chance to like go on a road trip or go off the beaten path, I think that's really cool. But I think old is cool. Sale is cool. It's all in the eyes of whoever does it. Another thing a girlfriend of mine told me recently, she found really cool wallpaper online Mm -hmm. and she didn't want to decorate her whole wall with the wallpaper. She just wanted to frame sections. So she bought samples of the wallpaper Mm -hmm. for five bucks each, framed it with frames that I think she used like a 50% Michael's coupon for. And they're these wicked, it's actually Barbie wallpaper, but it's vintage Barbie wallpaper. $5 each with the frame we're talking like maybe 15 bucks a print and she has this super cool gallery wall of like old school barbie stuff which is unbelievable so i think getting really creative about where you're 
sourcing from makes such a big difference. If you have to splurge on something like a bed or a mirror or the thing that's truly going to make your life better, Mm -hmm. do it in smart places. Don't splurge on everything. Mm -hmm. You don't need to splurge on everything. And now your friend has that cool story of like, oh, this was only five bucks. You know what I mean? Yeah. At least for my generation, we're trying so hard to be liked by everyone that it's like we want to have the coolest things. I've never been that kind of person, at least for me. Like even my job is all social media, but I still have like the iPhone XR. Like I don't have the brand new phone. You know what I mean? I've never been like that. I was raised in the thrift store practically. Like I'm like, I was always thrift shopping. I have three siblings, so I have a big family. So if my mom bought like one thing for my siblings, she'd have to buy it for all of us. So I was always raised like saving money or it would be like, you're allowed to get something, but get something small. You know what I mean? I was always raised like that. So I always knew the value of a dollar, but especially with moving out now, I'm like, everything I'm buying is my own money. Like it really does feel crazy. And it's kind of fun. It's like a game. Sometimes I pretend it's like, oh my gosh, I get to wake up in the morning and I pretend I'm a grown adult and I'm going to clean the dishes and I'm going to pay my own bills. And then I'm like, oh wait, that's not a game, but like, it's fun. (laughs) It's life. Yeah. You're glowing when you talk about it. It's such a wonderful thing to see. And I think one of the things you've touched on, which has come through obviously on social media, but in this conversation as well is it is a time that everyone's trying to keep up with each other. Mm -hmm. I really believe that staying true to yourself and staying true to your financial situation and just being honest with those things is the best way to go. I love that you said you don't need everything all at once. You can invest in pieces at a time. You can wait for the thing that you love. If there is something you want to splurge on, do it when you can versus doing it all at the same time. Mm -hmm. And it will all build and build. So I just have loved talking to you about this because I think it's super, super helpful. And for people who are coming out into the world thinking they need to have everything and it all needs to be bright and shiny and brand new, totally doesn't have to be. No one has everything. And then even when you have everything, it feels like you still want more. So I'm like, you can wait until something's on sale. You can just let it all add up because you always want more. Do you know what I mean? You have to just be grateful for also like what you have in front of you, you know? Love it. I love that. Okay. You are crushing it. You have, you talk about your five revenue streams that you have. Mm-hmm. You are 18. You're living on your own. You're making your own money. You're doing it. You've got your budget book. It's such an inspiration for people of any age. Truly. Mm-hmm. What is the best piece of advice when it comes to money that you could leave someone with? Best piece of advice for money, at least for me, like I'm very smart with my money. I love saving my money. I like budgeting my money. I'm very good with it. But at the end of the day, also, like, you have to put yourself and your own goals first. Do you know what I mean? Because the way, at least for me, when I'm older, I am kind of like, I'm not old, but I'm like, when I'm older, I want to be making money, doing things that make me happy. Like money is a lot, but it's not everything unless you're making money because you like making money. Does that make any sense? No, it absolutely does. And I think basically you're finding your path forward by monetizing things that you love doing, but is it worth it if you're not working towards your goals? You could be working at a job that you hate and it doesn't matter how much money you're making. You could be miserable. I want to turn like my passion into making money. And I feel like at least for me, when I'm like meeting people my age, the first thing they always ask me is like, how much money do you make? Are you rich? How much money do you make? And I'm like, first of all, it's my money. Like you don't need to know how much money I make. It's mine. But also I don't see what I'm doing as money. I see it as like, this is my passion and I love doing it. And it is a job and I take it very seriously, but the money is just, it's like happening as well. You know what I mean? It's like a whole separate thing. As long as I'm happy with what I'm doing, if you're doing something that you love, you'll make money. And money always comes back. Time doesn't necessarily always come back. That's a great piece of advice. I love that. I think the other thing too is I am quite a bit older than you. And I would say that I've gone through several changes in my career and the things that I've been doing. And so because of that, your money is being invested in different places. One thing I love about you is that you love investing and you love not like learning about money. And I do think it's really important that people not get intimidated by age or how much money they have. And I think taking the step to actually talk to somebody about learning about how to make your money work for you is a really cool thing. And I think you can do that at absolutely any age. What do you think about that? I think it is never too late to start like saving your money and investing your money. It's also never too early. Like, (laughs) you know what I mean? You're never too late and you're never too early. Right now is the perfect time. It's really intimidating for young people, at least when we hear about like investing money. It is like, we didn't learn any of this in school. I'm like, I didn't know anything about investing. I'm like, what is it? I only knew it because I would be sitting at home and my parents would have like a person who is like an investor come in and talk to them and talk to them about their money and where they should put their money. And I did, that's all I ever heard about investing. Like when I heard investing, I thought of like someone in a business suit. (laughs) You know what I mean? Die in your living room. (laughs) I didn't think that I could 
download an app on my phone and like open up my TFSA and like start investing from my phone. Like I didn't think that that was a thing. And I'm happy that I started investing at such a young age and I started maxing out my TFSA at such a young age because it's honestly intimidating. It's intimidating, but then once you get the hang of it, it's like, oh, this is easy. Like, you know what I mean? You just got to do it. And you're never too old and you're never too young. Even my sister is older than me. And I'm like, girl, open your TFSA. I'm like, start investing your money. And she's like, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. And I'm like, I'm going to help you. I'm going to teach you because you're not too old. And you can't let just because something's intimidating, getting in the way of like your future finance in my opinion. I love it. Like none of my friends even know what a TFSA is. And I'm like, we're going to change that. I'm like, I'll help you. <laughs> I love it. I think your relationship with money and looking out for yourself and your future self is so healthy and wonderful and gets me excited for you. And also for people who are looking to make that change in their lives too, because it can seem so scary. I called my financial advisor for the first time and I probably spent the first 15 minutes apologizing to him because I didn't know enough. And he was like, I'm going to stop you right there. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to feel sorry about. We're going to get you the information you need and you're going to get comfortable with this. And it truly is. I think having financial information is one of the most powerful tools any of us can have because it's truly not that complicated. It sounds super scary, but it is not. I am not a math person. I am not a financial advisor, but I now have a good grasp on that for myself. And it's such a cool feeling. Cause you feel, you feel educated. I love the feeling of like learning. I just love learning so much. And it's like the best part about life is that you can just keep learning about everything. And I never thought that I would be like into investing you know, <laughs> like, you know, I never thought that. And now it's like, it's so much fun. It's like, a, okay, it's not a game, obviously, but it's, it can be fun. <laughs> like, it's not a game. <laughs> it can totally be fun and it will unlock amazing things for you in the future as well, too. So I think that's a super cool thing. Is there anything we haven't covered that you want to talk about as far as like living on your own for the first time or money or investing or anything before I let you go? If we're talking about money, this is just like my little shout out here. Just because you're a young girl doesn't mean that you can't know anything about money. Doesn't mean that you don't know anything about money. Doesn't mean that it's not your place to talk about money. It is very much your place. Just because I'm young, I always have so many people older than me telling me I don't know anything at all. And I think that's like not true at all. And I think that's like kind of rude because money is something that we should all be able to talk about and we should all learn about. And no one is more worthy of learning about something than you are. Just because you're a young girl, that's not getting in your way. I'm not letting that get in your way. Like you can literally do anything you want. And if your passion is investing, if your passion is art, I don't know, whatever your passion is, just do it. Like this is like, we're not even talking about money here. I'm just saying young people get told so many things that they can't do things because of their age. But I am literally like, you can do it and you will do it. And if you believe in yourself, you actually will do it. Just do it. There we go. I'm like, I'm sounds like a Nike ad. I'm like, just do it. <laughs> <laughs> just do it. This whole podcast is brought to you by Nike. Yeah. Funny. There's so much of what you're saying that I just think about my whole entire life and the things and the goals you set out for yourself. And you really can, and you have to surround yourself with good people and big dreams and confidence and the understanding that you might not know everything, but you can learn and you'll learn as you go. And you're going to fall on your face a million times as you do it, but it's worth it if you want to get where you're going. And I think you're getting there and you already have achieved so much. And it has been such a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. It's been such a pleasure talking to you. Jonathan, I think it's pretty cool that you and today's guest had very similar backgrounds. Oh, really? Yeah. She worked at Dairy Queen as a Disney princess at birthday parties and was an actor. And because of that, Spencer moved out with complete financial independence, 18 years old. No doubt there's a lot of overlap. I didn't work as a Disney princess at birthday parties, despite all the rumors you might have heard. I did work at McDonald's. Started there when I was 14 for $2.05 an hour. Oh my God. Then started on Street Sense a year or so later. Lived on my own early too, but wasn't exactly financial independence. What with the Canadian showbiz salary at the time. I still had to work in the summer hosting karaoke by night and selling clothes by day on the Cavendish PEI boardwalk. I love all of that because all of those jobs contributed to your financial independence eventually. And one thing that Spencer and I talked about in this episode was how it's never too early or too late to start saving for your future. Which brings us to our gimme credit tip of the day. Saving for future you is a lot to take in. Credit unions are here to help answer every single question you might have. And let's be honest, to take the fear out of the process. Because planning for your future should be fun, not freak you out. 